Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Car Designs. Thanks so much for stopping by to spend some time with me here today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting, tutorials, and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. I've got another video today sharing some inspiration with the Gina Kid Designs June 2020 release. Today's project, I'm going to be using these stamp sets here. I'm going to be using the Let's Celebrate. I'm just going to grab a sentiment from this stamp set. And then I'm also going to be using the Hands of Love. I really love this stamp set. It's got such cute little hands and nice sentiments. For today's project, I'm going to be using the little hands that make a heart. I've also got a set of square dies here. This is They've got some stitching and some scallops, and I'm just going to use one of those little dies. And then I have a Gina K Designs Inks in a Rainbow collection here. I've got Obsidian, Tangerine Twist, Red Velvet, Passionate Pink, Wild Lilac, Blue Denim, Blue Lagoon, Lucky Clover, and Wild Dandelion. And I've got a piece of craft foam here. This is just regular old white craft foam, nothing special about it. I'm going to cut off a little tiny strip. Uh, I'm going to cut a piece here. This is one inch. That's more than I need. So I'm just going to cut off a little quarter of an inch strip. And that's all I'm going to need for my project. I'm going to use this as a stamp. So I've just got this little tiny strip of craft foam and I'm going to take everything out of the way here. And I've got my mini Misty and I've got a panel of cardstock that measures eight and a half inches by three and three quarters. And it's a little bit bigger than I need, but we can trim it down later. So I slip my panel into my mini Misty and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to lay this little piece of craft foam. And I've ha I have this idea in mind and I don't think the mini Misty is going to work. I think we need to pull in the big guns for this one. We need the original size Misty. Now it would have worked with the mini Misty had I had the mini mouse pad inside of it, but I don't for the mini Misty, but I do for the regular Misty. So what I've done is slipped a few pieces of cardstock in behind my Misty mouse pad to create sort of a little bit of a raised space so that my craft foam can stamp nicely. So I've got my cardstock loaded up into my Misty and I'm going to be using those grid lines on my Misty mouse pad. This is a very important, crucial step to this particular technique. We need to be able to measure every time we stamp. I'm going to lay the stamp where I want it and I'm going to sort of look and see where that stamp is going to lay on the door of my Misty and add a little bit of a tape runner here. We can rub this off later, so don't worry about that. So once my stamp is right where I want it to be, I'm going to grab my rainbow of inks. I'm going to start with my wild lilac and I'm going to ink up my craft foam just as if I was inking up a stamp. So it's very important here to make sure that you wipe off any excess ink that might be sitting on your Misty door. Because as we go through this technique, the the paper is going to hang outside of the door. So we get a beautiful stamped impression. I have a gorgeous purple strip and this wipes off easily. I can wipe off my craft foam using a damp rag. I just have a microfiber cloth and I'm just using that to wipe everything up. And what I'm going to do is shift my cardstock down two lines on my Misty mouse pad. So that's the measurement I'm going to be using is two little squares, two grid marks. So I'm going to take my second color, and this is Gina K Designs Blue Denim, and I'm going to ink up my craft foam, close the door of my Misty, and stamp. And those little cardstock shims in behind the Misty mouse pad is what allows us to get a nice firm impression. It raises the cardstock closer to the foam stamp. So making sure that we clean off everything, wiping off the door of the Misty, and we're going to move our cardstock down two grid lines. And then we're going to ink up with the next color. This is Blue Lagoon. And we'll close the door of the Misty and stamp. And I'm going to continue doing this exact same process until my panel is filled with rainbow strips. So we've got Lucky Clover, Wild Dandelion, Tangerine Twist, Red Velvet, Passionate Pink, back to Wild Lilac and Blue Denim and so on until we've got this beautiful rainbow stripes. This is so awesome. I envisioned this pattern paper uh, while I was laying in my bed. I was just watching some card making videos and I had this great idea and I jumped out of bed. I ran to my craft room and this is what I came up with. So I had a lot of fun just making that panel and I think that you will too. 
Imagine the possibilities with all of your dyes. You could just do this technique with tons of different things. Okay, so let's move back to the card here. Uh, we're going to trim up this panel. I'm gonna cut down my little rainbow stamped panel to three by eight inches. And I'm gonna save that little extra strip that I cut off. I'm gonna cut up a card base that measures eight and a half by seven inches. And then I'm gonna cut some black matte layers. And this is going to measure eight and a quarter by three. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for this. I will leave all of my slimline layers in the description down below so that you'll be able to keep up. Okay, so I've got two black layers, a card base, and then I've got one more white panel. I'm gonna use this for the inside of my card base. So again, the measurements will be all in the description down below. Let's pull in this scoreboard and let's score our slimline card. So I'll put my cardstock into my scoreboard on the seven inch side and score at three and a half. So this is going to create a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card, okay? So I'm going to take my black layer and my white layer and glue them together. So I'm just creating um, a spot where we can write our message on the inside of the card. And then I'll adhere that on the inside of my card base. And then I'm gonna take that little extra strip of pattern paper that we had. I don't want any of this to go to waste. So I think this inside of my card base just ties everything in together nicely and it looks so pretty. So now I'm going to take my stamped panel, put it into my Misty, I'll remove my cardstock shims, and I'm not sure where I'm going at this point. I decided to change course. I took the hands off of my cardstock, I grabbed a piece of scrap black cardstock, and then I'm going to stamp these three times with Gina K Designs Watermark ink. I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I'm going to grab my anti-static powder bag, I'm gonna turn my heat tool on so it's good and hot by the time I get to it, and I'll point that away from me so I don't get burned. And then I'm going to ink up my stamp. So I've got this loaded up onto the door of my Misty. I'll ink up with my Gina K Designs Watermark ink. And I'm gonna stamp this three times because I want three of these images on the front of my card panel. I'm gonna grab a scratch piece of paper and I'm gonna take some fine detail white embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle this over top of all of my hands. So these are not all in a row. These are just stamped on there randomly. I'm going to die cut them out using those square layering dies that I showed you earlier. So I'll sprinkle my embossing powder over my images and I will tap off any excess powder. And now my heat tool is good and hot and I will bring it to my hands and emboss those at warp speed. It's super fast by this point because it's all warmed up, ready to go. And then I avoid warping my cardstock. With Heat embossing naturally, warping happens. You can't avoid it 100%, but you can minimize some of it by making sure your heat tool is good and hot. Okay, so once this is done, I'm going to take one of those little square dies, and this one has a little scallop edge with some stitching on it, and I'm going to cut out all three of my hands with this little die. So as I cut them out, I decided I wanted to step this up just a little bit. I grabbed a self-healing cutting mat and I grabbed a craft knife and I just made a little tiny slit inside of my hands and I wanna cut out that black cardstock where the heart is. So I'm just gonna take my time and fussy cut out the little center so that you can see through the hands to the pattern in behind. So I think that looks good. This is exactly what I wanted. And now I'm going to grab some sentiments from the Let's Celebrate stamp set. I'm going to load up my hands and my cardstock to where I think everything's going to be positioned. And I'll put my sentiment in between the little squares. And this says, spread kindness. I think this is a really nice sentiment. And I like just the thought of spreading kindness. It's such a nice gesture. Okay, so I'm going to rub my fingers over top of these stamps because I hadn't used them yet. So I wanna rub off any of that manufacturing residue. I'm going to ink up my stamp with my Obsidian Amalgam ink. I will stamp it a couple of times to get a nice dark black impression. And now we're going to start gluing things together. So I adhered my rainbow panel to a black piece of cardstock that I had cut up earlier. And then I adhered this to my card base. So I'll get this centered on my card panel. I'm going to get my hands lined up on the panel and I'm gonna grab a pencil and I'm just gonna mark where those hearts are going to land. So I do that for all three of my little squares 
and I've got a scrap piece of red foil cardstock. I want to stick this in behind the hearts so that it kind of is like flashy and stands out a little bit. So I just cut out some random pieces. It doesn't matter the size as long as it is small enough that it's going to be behind my little hands and big enough to fill up the heart that I've fussy cut out. So I'm going to center these on my panel. I'm just eyeballing. I don't do any measurements here. Everything is just by eye. I don't aim for perfection. I just aim for what pleases my eye and what I enjoy doing. So I use some foam squares to pop up my little hands. And that's about it for this card. With the exception of some sparkly gems. Of course, I need to add some sparkly gems. It's a rainbow with all kinds of fun stuff going on. We need to add some sparkle. So I'm going to use my jewel picker here and some liquid adhesive and glue down a bunch of jewels randomly scattered across this card. And then that is it for this card. Here is a close up look at my homemade rainbow pattern paper, beautiful red hearts, fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what else to call it. I enjoyed making this card so much. I really think that that rainbow is so striking and it looks like a store-bought piece of paper. I mean, it'd probably save you a ton of money just making your own rainbow papers using dyes that you have in your stash. So that is it for today's video. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate all of the support. Coming up on screen are some videos I think you may enjoy, including the playlist for the Gina K Designs June 2020 release. I think I'm up to 11 videos now. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!